Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Carbonite Bounty BS with me and the nerds here. Uh, hope everybody's had a good week. Um, definitely, definitely some exciting things going on in the Star Wars realm here, and you know, just excited to, to wrap up this season. So, how's everybody doing this week? Awesome, real good, great, good weekend. Yeah. The Pirates gave up 14 definitely. runs to the Reds tonight. I'm feeling great. Wow. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet, but uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. <laughs> but baseball's back, so you know you can't complain. Yeah, back. Definitely, but uh, yeah, we're glad everybody's doing well. Hope everybody uh, out there as well, listening and watching, had a good, uh, happy holidays as well. I mean, you know a lot's been going on, and hopefully everybody got time to watch those episodes. It's, you know, a short, short watch for us all. So um, not a lot of content, but a lot, a lot of good plot points and. As we can tell by somebody's specific name, we'll let him dig into the teeth of something, um, you know, his favorite part of these episodes. So uh, before we even dig into that, uh, DP, why don't you let us know where everybody can find us at? Nerdcyclopedia.com, people. Make sure that you go on to the site, find on all our links, uh, making sure you're visiting on our, pla- on our, our, our platforms. I'm told, uh, I got all this stuff in my mouth. Garbage. Anyway, um, Nerdcyclopedia.com. At Nerdcyclopedia, we are on Twitter, we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram, anywhere that you, you know, listen to your favorite podcast. We're also there on Apple Podcasts, on Stitcher, on iHeartRadio, on, on Google Play, Spotify. Like I say, anywhere that you listen to your favorite podcast, we are there. Also, make sure that you are going to our Facebook feed, um, Carbonite Bonnie BS. We are on there as a group and also, you know, during this live feed. Make sure that you are liking and also sharing, you know, us and also the group. Make sure that you are commenting because we love to get your feedback on, you know, what we're all doing here. If you're watching us on YouTube right now, make sure that you're hitting that notification button and the subscribe button. So anytime that we're on, you know that we're on. Make sure that you also leave us some feedback at nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. Appreciate that, DP. And, you know, as we get into things, like I said, short run here, but uh, definitely a lot, a lot of content to go into. So without a further ado, we're just going to toss it right in for him. You know, uh, Captain Tarkin, uh, <laughs> how about you lead us off and tell us uh, what was your thoughts so far this um, this last run of the finale here? So uh, every, every time I watch these uh, watch these episodes, I'm so I feel so bad. I didn't watch these when they came out. Like I <laughs> missed out on all this great stuff. But I had I was even talking about it uh, last last week that. I wanted to see some more backstory, like Tarkin. How did Tarkin meet Anakin? Like, when, <laughs> when did this happen? Because these guys were, they were pretty tight. I mean, they they were together. They they admired each other. Tarkin was the only person that could really speak up or speak down to Vader, right? I mean, that was always a thing. Uh, and Vader respected him. So where did that start? And did they not show it, like, in, in its entirety? Um, yeah. But that that really stuck out to me in this in this little set of uh, episodes. That development, seeing Anakin and Tarkin, how they met and how they started, how they were working together, like almost right off the bat, there was a, a mutual respect. You knew these guys were going to go somewhere. Um, the the Trishi, these are uh, Transoidians. I don't know. I'm saying that right, but the the, the Bosks, the, that species, that was awesome. Seeing them as hunters, seeing them in, as they're in their uh, in their sort of natural habitat i mean just really great stuff in this uh in this last set and uh definitely worth watching but i really i really just love the 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 introduction of tarkin into there very 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 cool right what do you think my favorite Hitch? thing this week was 100 percent chewbacca showing up <laughs> and just being awesome and, and that is just anytime chewbacca shows up in the star wars universe especially during time periods where canonically he's alive, like during the prequel time periods, because uh, he's still alive. Uh, it's always really awesome. Although at a certain point you're thinking like, are there other Wookiees in the Star Wars universe? Or are there like 15 of them? You know what I mean? Because you see Chewbacca everywhere. Uh, I really enjoyed the whole the whole Transdosian. That is how I believe that's pronounced. Transdosian, they're lizards. I love this, this subplot where they're hunting down Jedi for sport. It just seems like such a random, awful thing that you would expect a a, a race of um, 
like predator lizards right like just dinosaurs pretty much like di like there was no meteor right i think that's the idea with those guys uh watching how they were just sort of like yeah you know everything's food you know what i mean even the wookies they had all the wookie pelts everywhere i really liked it a lot i liked the whole plot with uh this this idiot kid getting like trying to kill ahsoka and just getting you know getting it a blip. Oh, just love it <laughs> and i really like seeing uh how ahsoka has developed her own like like her own not just personality but her own like will like she has goals that she's gonna meet and she doesn't really care if if anakin says no she doesn't care if she's gonna do it anyway you know what i mean like she's gonna meet her goal no matter what anakin says and i really like that development in her character and you know seeing how it brought them closer together by the end man it's a really great great end to season three what about you dp yeah, seeing um, you know how Ahsoka, you know, just her whole personality develops. She gets a lot of her ways and courage from Anakin, and to think that how they they were sort of like you know Anakin didn't really want to take on a Padawan, you know, from the start, um, and just to see them come, you know, to this way to like right now, um, do you know to at, you know to to at least this point to where you know she's just developing on her own and making her own decisions. Um, it's hit you with Stan. It's it's a great thing to see in her character. I mean, it almost makes you you know believe that you know she's gonna, um, just she 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 is she is not to be you know she is not afraid to to go on her own and do her own thing, make her own decisions, and you know at some point in the future she's gonna split off from you know Anakin, um, and it's it's gonna be a wonder to see because she doesn't need to be brought down in the um on that dark side you're not seeing any type of dark side you know to, you know with um with ahsoka whereas with anakin you're seeing like you know bits and pieces to where that's just not in ahsoka's nature you know with anakin you're just seeing like stuff that will eventually him in the being like darth vader um so it's, it's like hitch was saying it's fun to see that and then you got like the wookiees showing up and everything i know them i said you know as a casual viewer and everything i was like i recognize them um so it was funny just seeing that and seeing, you know, their fighting skills and everything. And, you know, um, you don't really see that much, you know, movement with, um, you know, Wookiee in the movie <laughs> um, with, with Chewie and everything. But, you know, seeing them just, you know, bob and weave and everything, it, it was fun to see. Yeah, and I and I echo that as well with you guys. I mean, my, my standout point of this last few episodes was Ahsoka's development. Um, it, it's just wild. You know, we keep getting into the writing of this. It's just amazing how they take kind of a character, and she's not really out of the air, but kind of out of the lure, that they make her such a strong character. I mean, it just makes you wonder why wasn't she more prevalent in Star Wars? But, you know, it's it's one of those things. I mean, they, they take, it's, it's kind of like the whole Captain America Marvel idea. They take these tier two to tier three characters, and they develop them so strong that, I mean, you essentially, I mean, and I don't want to get into that, but you want to make her essentially be what Ray is. You know, it's just... So hopefully, you know, as they keep doing this, and um, the, the good thing is, uh, I believe Filoni produced, uh, he was executive producer on the last two uh, episodes of this fin finale here, but um, just the writing for this stuff, and Ken alludes to it a lot, I mean, this stuff is, it's deep, it's gripping, and it, it definitely keeps your attention for the 25 to, you know, you know, 28 minutes each episode runs, so I'm enjoying these episodes each each time we watch them. When Ahsoka first appeared in um, the Mandalorian, or actually when when people started hyping up Ahsoka, she's going to be in the Mandalorian, you know, and then, um, you know, the drum beats just started getting louder to when her episode was going to actually come. Um, and then she came and, you know, was just it's like this. Yes, she's here. You know, I was just, you know, reading up on like a lot of the backstory with Ahsoka and I, you know, finding out that she wasn't really a popular character. Um, in fact, she was like a little hated a little bit when she first came out because all of a sudden you got this um, this new Padawan um, to Anakin and, you know, they're thinking Anakin doesn't really have a Padawan like that. Um, who is she? You know, and, and, and it's, a, it's not a he, it's actual she. And she came off a little bit irritating. And then as the writing just progressed, as T. Mitch was saying, um she, her character got stronger 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 so by the time when we see her in mandalorian people are just like crying out like wow we cannot wait to see put ahsoka on screen and then it was just like this big uproar to um to when she finally appeared in her adult form 
um, in you know, in the Mandalorian. And I'm loving seeing how, um, you know, just she develops just over time and everything. She is a very important Star Wars character, especially um, of being a female Star Wars character, which you really don't have besides a Ray and some other tertiary characters and stuff. Um, so, so developing her and actually bringing her to the forefront is really important in like the whole. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you know, I feel like I feel like she was the uh, she was the like the 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 uh, ace in the hole, the back pocket. Like you don't want to show your whole hand. Yeah, you, know, you yeah. want to keep yeah. something. You want to keep right. something to pull out later. And I think she was that. So they knew she wasn't going to be real strong, real popular when they introduced her in, in the Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. uh, they kept her in there, but they did want to say, well, you know what? We can, we can age her. We can grow her. We can mature her and we can pull her out and throw her into this new universe world. And people are going to go, oh, you know what? I remember when I saw that and she was annoying as a child, but now full grown adult and, and uh, trained and sort of her own personality, you know, I, I dig her now, you know, I think it was uh, something it like it actually says a lot to fandom too, because you cannot, you cannot, if, if you're going to have a plan, stick to the plan, you know, you can't, but just yeah. bow to something where, where if, if the fandom is just crying out just loud and everything, they want things change and stuff, you know, you got to basically have a plan. Now it's a different thing where you don't have a plan and just throwing stuff out there. Fans can see that, you know, you're just throwing stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks. Fans don't like that, and, they, and I don't think fans actually just you know deserve that. But they had a plan with Ahsoka, you know. Um, fans oh. maybe did not like how she started out, but you know they stuck with it, which is very important. And that's sort of like what happened with the the third trilogy. They kind of just threw stuff out there. They wanted to throw together some sort of a a big long finale of some sort, and none of it really connected to the rest. So I think you're right. I think you're right uh, that they, they, they need to get back to basics somehow and, and figure that out. Can, can I'm, I'm going to be so curious to see how you rewatch these, these, the, the sectors on um, third trilogy. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I'm going to have. <laughs> because everything was an A with you. You know, yeah. is it going, is it going to remain that? Because, uh, I mean, because what's I'm the missed opportunity now of that trilogy? <laughs> I think, I think we all are sort of hitting on where, what it was missing was, Ray getting taught by Ahsoka, right? I mean, Luke was great. I'm right. not here. I think episode eight was fine. I think the way they did what they did with Luke Skywalker is fine. I don't have a problem with that. I know, you know, me and T Mitch are going to differ about that later on when we get to it. That's a big hype. We'll fight. We'll, we'll hype that up as we get closer. We'll talk about it. Uh, <coughs> right. But that's the thing I think we're missing is that Ahsoka is this, this female badass Jedi, and that is effectively what ray is as well and this this lineage from from vader to ahsoka to ray right and then her genetic lineage from palpatine it would have dovetailed together so well so maybe maybe t mitch when we talk about our differing opinions about episode eight but agreeing that there's something missing in the middle of that story right we agree about that right you know that this is maybe a big piece of that hunk is that you know the spiritual you know the spiritual child of of uh anakin isn't involved only his his actual son so maybe maybe what right. we were missing was ahsoka coming in and saying things to ray like i've seen what happens when you get too attached you know she's getting too attached to someone i've seen this you know what i mean and of course you know i'm not gonna say no to uh, you know, if you give me another, like, a, let's say an hour or half of a movie that's as good as that episode of The Mandalorian, I'll sign up for a hundred of them. A hundred of them. It was that good. Yeah. And I feel the same way. I mean, you know, episode eight, it's not, and the thing is, I bash it because of where it falls in the sequel trilogy. If it's a different movie and it's a one-off, then I get it. But I just, like we all discussed, it's three different movies that they kind of just had different ideas. It wasn't a linear script. And it looks like a dumpster fire. But um, right. it's, it's like Ken said, you know, yeah. the plan. We're the, yeah. throwing no stuff plan. against the wall, you know. Yeah. And There's no plan you know. to it. But uh, as far as the fan service stuff we're all alluding to, I, I fully agree with it. Um, 
you know, a little bit off topic, but, you know, with them bringing Ahsoka as a, as a big character due to some fandom, I'm really looking forward to seeing if, and I, I'm pretty sure it will happen, if they do a Luke Skywalker saga, I, we've been crying out for it, but we have to see Mara Jade at some point. I know Thomas has alluded uh, yeah. to it um, Thomas is a big as narrative. far as what's Legends and what is Expanded Universe, but yeah, Mara Jade has to somewhere fall in, whether she is going to be what they alluded to in Expanded Universe um, for once a Sith became kind of, you know, an accolade kind of on her own, then falling in love with Luke and then potentially somewhat being a Jedi. So it's interesting to see if they bring her character. I mean, I know it might not happen, but Scarlett Johansson, um, she'd be perfect. She'd be perfect. She can, yeah. based on her stuff, she does a Black Widow kind of, you know, discipline with weapons, things like that. I think she'd be a great actress for for the part. Um, but you know, that's that's something I'm looking forward to. You know, outside of this, and I was, it was funny. I mean, as we get into this, to see, you know, the progression of as you know, Anakin or as the Vader. We haven't seen the yellow eyes yet. We've seen a little bit of the anger, but. Um, I'd be interested to see, you know, as we move forward in the season four here, kind of where they take the characters. You know, Ahsoka's basically Anakin on, you know, her ways and how she's, she's a female Anakin. She yes. she she takes a lot of the um she takes a lot of her her direction, you know, and just enhancing her own, you know, um um sense of self and everything from Anakin. Right. So yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see her development. I, I really think that she kind of stole the show you know at this point you know obi-wan and anakin are there but i mean her development here it's kind of like her arc almost is, i mean we can probably agree this is like her coming to age moment as a you know jedi padawan um so yeah interested to see that and as as it ended i was happy with the chewbacca stuff seeing a little more mm-hmm. of you know wookies you know other than just one and you know to see them kind yeah. of what what's happening on them they're still enslaved because i believe we see them in episode three um and a little bit on the the clone war as well but uh yeah it's just you know it's nice to see you know more lure and all this being linear it's just it's great how everything's linking together and when we get to watch three it'll make more sense i believe you know i want to talk a little bit about how how this little set of episodes has has a really great like dichotomy of roles for ahsoka uh in the first set she's told don't come on this because you're not like you know experienced enough it's really dangerous and she is like played down to as the junior, 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 junior partner, right? The least of the Jedi, the one who we have to protect because you're a kid. And then immediately we see her thrown into this situation where she's not just like the de facto leader. They know she's the most experienced and powerful. And it's the truth. She is older and wiser and has way more experience than all these kids. And it's interesting to see how she changes, like how, how she reacts to being actually given responsibility. And it's a real yeah. huge growth yeah. moment because, like, right. she's not petulant, you know what I mean? And she has to deal with that That's petulance great. from these kids, right? So she's learning yeah. She's learning that way. And it's so, it's so interesting, like, from the perspective of knowing the Jedi she <clears throat> is at the point where we are in the Mandalorian timeline and knowing that's actually where she's going to end up, how you can see, you know, this, this first, like, glimmer of her... Like what? Like the reason that she wants to help Grogu so much, right, is because of stuff like this. Like she just has a soft spot for younglings, and you can see why. So it's really cool. Well, and, it, and the the female character, female, also has a a family, real family nurturing, natural ability. Um, and I hope they develop those the young that whole storyline a little bit more. It seems like they're just going to drop that in and then let it go, but. Uh, that could be like her beginning of her, maybe her, she's going to, she's going to have her own like school of, of Jedi training. Maybe, maybe she's going to take one of them under her wing and eventually, you know, work with them, make, you know, grow them a little bit. Um, but that was, that was, it was, it was neat to see how she bonded with them pretty quick too. And mm-hmm. I liked all the, uh, the artwork in this last series seemed to be, it just reminded me of like Tim Burton, like, uh, uh you know uh what am i thinking like when they're walking along that that vine and it's got this like little weird little arc to it up to their little lair it had a real like dark um uh you know tim burdenish type of type of feel to it but the artwork's definitely getting a lot better too in this in this series i don't know if they're using different 
drawers or artists or something, but it's definitely yeah, getting a little right. more. Uh, I've been just getting better with their just animation and everything, you know. Everything's so much better and smoother, and you, you know, ever, like I like I was. You got you guys remember to, like, the difference between a computer in like 2005 and a computer in 2012, though. Like that's probably <laughs> <laughs> a pretty big, pretty big difference yeah, too. Yeah. Big technology jump. Could have some. Yeah, kind of like how um it it um from the Phantom Menace to um Attack of the Clones. You know how you know they was using film. You know Lucas was using film, and then you know jump to digital cameras and everything. That was a big start. You know, you could notice the difference. You know, a whole lot. Yeah, and I echo that as well. I mean, it's it's been you know it wasn't even steady. I mean, I think it was like where was one episode that you noticed a substantial jump and it wasn't within the same year, which was really, I don't know if they like were saying they maybe upgraded equipment infrastructure, but there's a quick jump. And I mean, everything is more crisp and it seems like along with the technology and the animation has changed the character development. It's like the, the, the whole kind of, you know, show just morphed into something a lot bigger. Like maybe they started with a certain budget and as it picked steam up, it just yeah. blew up. And it's crazy. Like I said, I, I feel bad neglecting it at the time. Now that I watch it here a few more times, it's just like, where was I? You know, what was I thinking at the time? Yeah, I feel the same way. I'm like, oh, I, if I could go back, I would have watched all these when they came out, <clears throat> watched them again and really had them more um, in the front of my mind as opposed to right now. I'm sort of like watching them for the first time, obviously, but then I have this additional knowledge because uh it's connecting this new universe that I, that I fell in love with. So it's starting to fill in a lot of the blanks for me, a lot of the spaces, you know, the characters and everything. Um, but like every time I watch these episodes, I, I dig these characters. I mean, they're like real people to me now. And I think that has a lot to do with the animation and the, the acting that's, that's going in the people that they're getting to, to, that they, they had to, to, to play these roles. I mean, they're all really good. Yeah, they're bring, bringing bring some of the movie actors mm -hmm. back and everything. So yep. I mean, that's that's you know just they're they're it, the the show doesn't talk down to you, which I appreciate with it being an animated show. You know, of yeah. course, there's like you know mature animated you know stuff out there. You know, Family Guy and you know you know Rick and Morty and stuff like that. Um, but this here, um, you you think of it as you. Know, for the for those who missed it you you think of it okay well this is just this doesn't really have anything to uh, we, you could you could just not you could skip this and still watch the movies and yeah essentially you can you can still watch the movies and still you know um be you know informed and everything but this you know the the series here gives you just a deeper level of understanding and appreciation with everything that happened between and just for a short period of time between attack of the clone and um you know, Revenge of the Sith and everything for just that shorter period just makes you um, just wish that they they would delve into, and I'll probably address this in other, you know, podcast stuff, other periods of Star Wars history besides just this in an animated form. Well, one real issue with the release order of all of this is that the Clone Wars were sort of alluded to in Episode Four, but you never really saw, like, anything that was directly referential to the Clone Wars. And now you see the Mandalorian has the live action super battle droid in it. And that's where Din is from. His origin story is from the Clone Wars. We see Ahsoka in that, in that, in that show. And so for me, it, it's so interesting to feel how the Mandalorian has redeemed this series by making me so invested in all of these characters that I know will uh, come yeah. back. And this series has redeemed the prequel trilogy in some way for me by giving me things mm. like, like, you know, Plo Koon, for instance, is a, is a, like, Plo Koon and Kit Fisto are two faces that you noticed right away in the movie. And you would, and I remember them. I remember them from episode two and episode three. And, like, kind of having an idea of what happens to them and seeing this all fleshed out and having them become three dimensional again makes that, that Order 66 hammer blow from episode three land was so much more force. And it makes me realize that the thing that was missing was these are all characters that I should be invested in because there's a missing TV series that is there factually that I haven't seen yet. And, and now that I know that that slots in there, it makes the way they sort of 
bounce back and forth between all these planets and all these these different Jedi that I don't really know make a lot more sense because now I'm going to know, oh, that's Plo Koon, that's Kit Fisto. I know exactly who they are. I know exactly who the clones are that are with them. And it's just going to be tough to see that that tight of a relationship and all of these Jedi are so tight with their with their troopers to see that flip because of Palpatine. I mean, it really sinks that ultimate act of betrayal, which is the fulcrum on which the entire saga turns. And it it's, mm-hmm. raises the stakes with that and raises them and raises them and raises them. And so because of that, right, which is, I know, very indirect, Mandalorian to this, to Order 66, I think this is like a really important piece of the canon and you can't skip it. You need You need to see it. It's not optional. I know that sounds really crazy to hear someone say something like that about a cartoon, but it isn't. You need to see these stories. You need to understand these characters so that the movies hit right. After we come back from break, I got a, you know, something I want to actually say as far as that too. So we'll be back and you're going to hear about our other show. So enjoy. We'll be right back. And now time for another episode of Nerd Cyclopedia Theater. Honey, I'm home and my boss Shut up, listen. Dinner. This week, you guys have to listen to the Nerd Psycho Comic Flicks show. It's a monkey punching a lizard in the face and they're the size of a skyscraper. That's right, we're going to talk about Kong versus Godzilla live on the show this week. Who cares about your boss? We've got crazy stuff happening. They destroyed Hong Kong live this week on NCFS. So after watching, after watching after the series, um, you know, just ends and everything, I'm gonna be I watching Revenge of the Sith. They might as well just retitle that for me, um, Fall of the Republic, mm-hmm. you know, because that's essentially what all this is just boiling up, you know, boiling down to, you know, um, it's just amazing to me how watching these three movies, um, or watching the three movies, you don't really get that sense of of dread and everything. You know, and Palpatine just doing just his damnness. He, he's an evil dude, that guy. <laughs> that's, that's just evil's in, incarnate, you know, and, you know, right there. And just watching how he's just playing both sides and how everybody's just falling for it. Um, and there's almost, it's just no way that they can stop it, you know, and then eventually the fall happens. So the, the Revenge of the Sith is going to be pretty sad for me. Yeah, Not like to that, mention yeah. that day, you know, Anakin turns into Darth oh, yeah, Vader. Yeah, which is whatever. Yeah, which is which. Nobody knew. Nobody saw. It <laughs> but yeah, I mean, exactly right. Like maybe change, you know, follow the Republic because never really saw the Republic. The Republic wasn't was already gone. You know, like when we when I was watching, you know, like A New Hope and Empire, that was done. All I had, yeah, yeah. I thought was the the Galactic Empire. That was cool. That was like where you wanted to be, and there was these rebels. That were messing everything up like why are they trying to go back to the <laughs> republic i mean the empire is pretty cool the stormtroopers <laughs> the stormtroopers could shoot though they like the new hope stormtroopers were uh-huh. were fearsome they could yeah. shoot and fight uh-huh. the ones in clone wars can't they're ter- <laughs> they're terrible the, yeah the, the clones are they're terrible but then they got yeah. good they got yeah. good mm-hmm. And those were the ones that moved on to become, after Order 66, those were the ones that moved on to actually destroy the Republic and rise the Galactic Empire. So, as a kid, I loved that. That was, yeah. like, the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, 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 seeing this, you know, as an adult and just seeing just, you know, knowing real-world politics and how things could really happen or things have happened, you know, and, and yep. it, this is just history, just, you know... George Lucas has done a brilliant job in just, you know, he's executive producing this series and everything and leaving it to Filoni and his writers and stuff to, to but it's all coming from his head and ideas and everything, you know, um, for the most part, but it's just a brilliant job in just laying everything out. And like I said, the sadness has about to happen to this Republic. Oh my goodness. Can't wait to see what's so sad it's, to see. This season is such a commentary on like, 
<laughs> like if you look at the the distance Anakin covers this season in his fall from from grace, right? It's a real commentary on the on the the general like evil that war is because it's what's putting Anakin in all these positions to have to exercise his attachment, right? If there was no threat to Ahsoka and Padme, he wouldn't be react telling people, you better shut up. Like, you know what I mean? He wouldn't be talking to people like that. He wouldn't be killing people in cold blood. He wouldn't be killing people at all. And what's really interesting about this, to bring us back to Captain Tarkin, is Tarkin's absolutely <laughs> right about the Jedi having no business being in the military. And that is a wild thing for him to just be correct. Yep. Yeah, and that was an important because what's the one thing? Uh, their fire has gone out of the galaxy. You know, when when every time Vader brings it up, what does Tarkin say? He's like, uh-uh. They were they were done before they began, you know. Yeah. They and and he and I think that might be the only what's the right word? That might be the only thing that really would be it would drive a, a stick between Vader and Tarkin is that Tarkin completely dismissed all Jedi and felt that they were insubordinate and had no place in, you know, running a, running a government or policing a government. They had absolutely nothing, no hands of theirs should have been in. And, and he, he handled it. I mean, his, his empire had no Jedi in it. And he, every time Vader got a little bit, Oh, force and this and that, what did he do? He immediately, no, no, that's not why. This weapon is what's getting us where we are. Not your force. Not your ooh, your hocus pocus. <laughs> he was he was that guy. He was that's that little Jedi magic. No way. <laughs> yeah, he was this. He was. There was no smoke and mirrors. Everything we're doing is because of me and you. That's it. We're actually because of me. He even dismissed the Empire or the Emperor on on numerous occasions. Yeah, he's like uh uh that. You go, you you and your dark friend go talk to each other. But what does he call it? It's a strange gonna... attachment to this ancient religion or something like that. And he says, uh, yeah. oh, I love the way he dismissively well, tells Vader to, 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 he goes, release him like this, like, ah. And he's just ordering this Sith Lord around like it's nothing. And it's it's interesting to see like, this imperiousness already present for Tarkin. Right. The way Han would actually talk to Chewbacca sometimes. You know, here's this nine foot tall creature that yeah. could apart and han was i mean literally dismissed him and made it joke. <laughs> so it's sort of the same thing and tarkin same was dynamic one. yeah yeah you're right tarkin, one that could st talk down to vader and vader was like okay yeah i got you know i know i understand i mean i know you, you guys talked about this before but do you think there's a space for these kind of um <clears throat> I mean, obviously there is, but do you think there's a space for these stories? Because just like we say, there's not enough set stories in, in the Star Wars, I guess, lure as far as Disney Plus shows. Um, I think there'd be a lot more to see about, like we're discussing, you know, Tarkin. Um, you know, Thrawn will probably be in Ahsoka, but I think there's, there should be more darker stories that you don't see with Star Wars. I think so, the so, thing is so, so that brings up, I guess the question is, it's not what it's not should there be more stories or a place you know for those space for those so it's like where do we want to see the stories where do we really want to see we really want to see this stuff in live action that's what we really want to see you know the stuff in animated form is fine it does the trick it does the job but we really want to see a lot of these stories in live action form was what i is what i'm thinking oh right. yeah the one thing that's i think the accolade is live action isn't it or is it animated what the, is Acolyte, the Acolyte series coming out on Disney Plus is basically like a Sith lore series. I'm pretty sure it is live action and not animated. The times we live in, I man. Can check the times short, we yeah. live in, I tell you. Uh, it's a crazy thing. There's all, they're already making this show, though. I would be like, make that show. And they're already doing it. It's so it's so weird. Like I, There's not even anything to complain about because they're already making they're already making it. And frankly, if it's not good, they're going to make another one in three weeks. It's so crazy, right? Like, if, oh, yeah. like Let's say you didn't like... Like, I imagine Star Wars is going to be a lot like how Marvel is right now. Didn't like WandaVision? Next one in the pipe is already mm -hmm. ready. Didn't like it? Loki's ready. And the fact that Star Wars is getting that sort of attention and budget and is so viable in so many different time periods with different stories, you know, the they have the space now to explain to us what the Empire people are actually trying to do beyond personal aggrandizement. You know, they have the ability to show us 
something beyond, you know, I want power. You know what I mean? I want to be powerful. What exactly is it that Tarkin wants to do? Why does he think that he has to build a monstrosity of technology to wrest power away from wizards? Why does he feel that's necessary? And we never see any of that in especially the original trilogy because it's just like, look, the Empire exists because it wants to. And that's that. You know what I mean? And it, and it gets you by. But seeing the whys filled in with like, like how did Palpatine take power and why did he want to take power? And why did, you know, why was there a clone army? Why was there even a conflict? All of it's starting to like lock into place and make sense. And it makes those other movies and those other, other media forms better. So it's just, it's just great. It's just really great. And uh, tying this even into uh, the series, into the, the latest one, I mean, I think that's what, like, you know, Ken's alluding to with Tarkin and Thrawn. That's what the final prequel trilogy or prequel uh, sequel or sequel trilogy, excuse me, is missing, is that powerful character. You had Ren and um, what is his name? Snoke. His, his leader. Oh, no, the, the, the Admiral, his guy. Oh, man. Who turned on him. I forget his name. Donald yeah, Gleason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's it? his actual name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, oh yeah, Hux. Hux. Yeah, yeah, Hux. Yeah, he was oh, like what? supposed oh, to be that character that. In Peter Rabbit, did you know he was in Peter Rabbit, the movie? No. Hux? Yeah, he was in that, and he was he was an adversary of Peter Rabbit. If you can imagine Hux fighting a rabbit, does he do about as well? Yeah. So, it, it, yeah. it's it's like a tie. It's like a tie. Anyway, yeah, Hux. But yeah, Hux was like the character that I thought was going to be that kind of all powerful. He started out that way, and then the writing, it just, I, I don't know. It just didn't go what I thought it to be. But yeah, that's what I thought that missing. And this show has it, you know, with the beginnings of seeing, you know, Tarkin and, you know, the, the Thrawn references and things like that. It's, it's, we've always needed those powerful humans, you know, that weren't, or even though, you know, Thrawn really isn't a human, but those powerful kind of beings that were not just you know jedi or sith or you're force sensitive although you know tarkin i don't know i guess he's in super intelligent i guess or, you know humanoid but you get into thrawn and he is you know an accelerated being that's essentially excels in war and you know 10 steps ahead of most people that perfect so, chess you know, i kind of like that one. Oh, and he's a right. chiss he's from he's from the chiss empire thrawn i i i have lots of stupid facts that i like to spill out about that guy oh man he rules Thrawn and, and, and just his name too. <laughs> oh my! You can goodness. yell it. I don't even. I don't even know the guy. Never even heard of guy. Maybe I, I, I even uh, watched Mandalorian. And all of a sudden, I'm hearing Thrawn throwing me throwing out. You know, Thrawn, Thrawn, Thrawn. I'm all. I immediately know that he's something to be feared. You know, so um, I, I cannot wait for his debut on um, what I'm assuming is Ahsoka's program or whatever his, her show coming up. But um, just you know, just hearing that name, it's 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 a it's a it's a hell of a name, strong name, strong Star Wars name. Yeah, and it's the also like Tarkin didn't need any any power, like any any force or any in anything. He was he was patient, intelligent, tactful. I mean, he was more powerful than any other human leader in the Star Wars universe. I mean, I, I can't think, except for maybe Mon Mothma, you know, on the rebellion side. But he was uh, he was able to lead machines, able to lead humans, and he didn't need any special powers. He just he just did his thing. I mean, he was a very very good, uh, charismatic leader, very smart, very tactful and patient. He wasn't brash. He wasn't. He didn't just run into things. Everything was planned out. You know, um, it's a. I want to see more of him too. You know, I hope they, they develop him a little bit more, but I have a feeling that like, does anybody know, does he come back in the next couple seasons or is he, we don't see mm. him. What are, we, what are we looking at? Not as, um, not as page much. and a head in the book. Yeah. Peeking ahead, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Even, even peeking ahead, I'm into uh, season four guys, as we uh, wrap this episode up here. Um, I believe there's around 22 episodes. So, we can kind of break it up eight, eight, and six if you want to do that. Or that sounds good um, to me. Yeah, yeah. So, as far as kind of digging into that, we'll start and resume. You know, season four, uh, part one with episodes one through eight. Um, 
you know, there'll be some things in there. I'm sure that we'll get a big discussion point on as some characters will return and we'll see some familiar faces. So I won't, I won't spill that too much. I know I'm sure DP will probably, probably has Disney plus. Up already. <laughs> <laughs> no, you That's say, he's been watching him while we talk. <laughs> <laughs> whenever I'm, whenever I'm talking, he's watching Clone Wars. That's what's that's how this this show works. Yeah, buddy, can't wait, can't yeah. wait to fire it up. But yeah, guys. So once again, you know, I know this was a, a short run, but it definitely a lot of talking points, a lot of interesting things um, in these last few episodes. But uh, as we get going, once again, we thank everybody for tuning in on whichever platform you're watching and listening to us. Please comment on all our platforms um listen watch our other shows as well i know you've seen some of our ad libs and some of our commercials but honestly it's a great community to be part of um we really appreciate everybody's interaction uh, moving forward as we you know continue to grow this community as we want to do so um without that being said guys once again thanks for tuning in to us i hope everybody had a happy holidays and until next week guys this is the way this is the way this is the way, this is the way. Nerdcyclopedia.